and we're back for part three of our procedural mountain building. We built the procedural mountain. We had some grass around here. I now made it into a sort of a dirt collar because we kind of put some actual grass on here. Now it's kind of silly that we have a mountain sitting in the middle of a plane. Usually, you have a scene. You want the mountains in the background. So first, what I'm going to do is go to my texture deformer, and in the ramp we used to determine where the mountain lives. I'm going to go to a U ramp instead of a V ramp. Sorry, I'm going to say a V ramp instead of a um, circular ramp. Um, now we've got the mountains on this side, so we need to switch the mountains to be on the other side and sort of come fading in. And maybe we want actually some mountains like closer, even start even closer, but sort of like this. So we get like a nice little mountain in the background idea. A little bit more mountains like this so we got mountains in the background we want to set up a camera i just created the camera so we got a camera right here and we're going to set it up so that it actually does all the things we need to do so set the film aspect ratio to be correct and frame it so what we get something that we like for the grass but sort of is important how we set it. So we got our mountainous landscape and we can render that and it looks like a very dull mountainous landscape. Now we're going to put some grass here in the foreground, some actual or some actual grass. No, we're going to put some fur on there. In order to use fur since this version of Maya, this is 2016, uh, you have to first in your preferences Plugin Manager, activate the fur plugin. It's not activated by default, the fur bundle. So we're going to auto load and load it. So we always have it. Once you've got the plugin loaded in your rendering menu, oddly enough, and even though it says initially plugin failed fur, I still have my fur menus. So I'm going to attach some fur to this geometry. Select a geometry. I go to rendering fur, attach fur description new, and I don't see anything. Reason for that is that the few point two point oh does not support fur. If I go to legacy default, I get all the interesting thingies on there. There's fur everywhere, little spiky things. If I go to high quality, you get the shade a bit better. So now we've got these little grassy thingies on it, or these li little pointy thingies on here. And if I render that, we see little pointy thingies on there. Even in mental ray. I'm going to, since it will slow us down at some point, I'm going to set the test strategy for the render a bit lower. So we got grass on there, but it doesn't look like grass at all. It looks like little pointy thingies. So let's find our grass. If we look at the outliner there's now a fur feedback which contains our fur and there's the fur description easiest way to get grass is to go to pre preset and select grass instead of gorilla lion mane or llama and replace it Bink. it will suddenly turn nice and green so if we go back to our render view and render this we get something that looks like grass it is not quite right, it's way too big. So we want to make it smaller. So in our fur description, that we want it smaller, and the best thing to do is to adjust the global scale so everything will be smaller. If you look here, you can see that there's a map width and a map height by which it determines where the grass ends up. This is a bit low, 512, if I, uh, uh, 256, it should probably be at least 512 or maybe even. 1024 for this scene. This also indicates that it's using maps, so you need to have a proper UV layout for this to work. Now I can play with all my parameters. I can, I'm in perspective now, so I can zoom in and say I want the tip a bit smaller and I want the thing to bend a bit more or the tip to curl a bit more or the favorite one probably is the scraggle. Make it all kind of bumpy and then set how much scraggle we and you can make them dance so 
clumping is how much they go to get together. So if we adjust the parameters, we go back to render window and render it from the camera view, and we got smaller grass and still grass on the top of the mountains, which kind of is not very good. How do we get more grass? What we can set, change, and I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so I can keep it open. We can change the density. The density is 10,000. That sounds like a lot, but if you put another zero on, we get something that's already way more dense. Not quite enough, but getting there. But we don't want it on the mountains, the grass. And maybe we want some, uh, like a road going through it, some area where there isn't any grass. We can do that by painting attributes. If we have a thing selected, we can paint fur attributes. And you can select what to paint. We want to paint the boldness. Um, I'm going to use a small map now, but it should probably be nah, Let's make it a bit bigger, 24. First description one, that's okay. Okay. So, let's get rid of my attribute for a second. I can now paint on my object. First thing I want to do is flood it so it's actually all a value of 1. And you saw there's more grass popping in. The default value for the boldness bolt is 0.1. Now I made the boldness 1, which is the highest value, and we got more grass. A higher boldness means more fur, more grass. A lower boldness means less. Completely logical, right? So if I take like a really big brush, B, zip, and just paint out all the mountains. Oh, I have to go to a value of zero to paint out all the mountains. So I'm roughly painting out all the mountains. No grass on the mountains. I still see one tiny little bugger up there. That just won't go. I'm going to take a little smaller brush. And I'm going to paint a nice little road right, right there. Going into the mountains. Let's see what we've got now. We got hardly any grass on the mountain, still some. And we got our path running through here, but our path is not quite bold enough. And there's still some grass over there. It's kind of hard to get all this grass completely painted out, and the paint tool is not very precise. So what we need to do is open that up in our favorite editing tool. So where does that map live? Let's go to the properties, to go to the details section, Go to the boldness maps, and there's the map. It's in my fur, fur attribute map, procedural mountain part two, it's actually part three, fur description one, boldness. That's where it lives. So let's find that in our finder. So it's in our project, render data, fur. Fur attribute map, proceed to mountain boldness, and that's it. If we now take this and open it, it with Photoshop, it's an IFF, so it always, uh, Mac always thinks it's actually a sound, you can see that it doesn't look all that detailed, and there's still all kind of little fluffy things in there. So we might want to just go in here and paint on it with a black and white brush with black and make the brush a lot wider and make sure this is all actually black and not some little stuff still in there it's a nice uh, thing going here make sure the road is nice and all black get this kind of nicer, uh, maybe a bit bigger brush to make it soft and play with this. So we get a nicer map. really helps if we uh, do it, make it 
update it in Photoshop a bit. So I'm going to save this as, and this is really hard to find, so I'm just going to take it into my source images and call it the Bald Mountain. I'm going to leave it as an IFF. I'm not going to take layers with it. And I definitely want it in Maya format, not an Amiga format. Going back to Maya. And we can now change this. We go there and just type in source images bolt mountain dot IFF. And now it should be a little bit better. We can really get the road. Still some grass in there. It's with the boldness you can hardly it's uh, almost impossible to get it down to really zero. And we've still got some like, nice pointy stuff on the mountain. So to get it completely out of the background part, mapping the boldness doesn't help. There's a few things you can do. You can also put it into the length. So we go back to our paint tool for paint for attributes tool. We're now going to paint the length and we get a new thing in there. And we're actually going to paint the length. We're just going to put the same thing in there. And that should give us some alleviation. And yes, that kills all the grass on the points where you completely painted it black. So it has no length and boldness. So it nicely fades away. We still do not have quite enough grass. And it also seems to have got a little bit shorter. Uh, so we can actually make the map multiplier 2 and get longer grass. Of course, if you really want a nice mountain, you want the grass to get shorter towards the mountain, so you get sort of forced perspective look. And we still do not have quite enough density on our grass, so we're going to increase the density with yet another zero. That's maybe too much. Let's make this, let's double it by a factor of 5. And we got some procedural grass going that might actually at some point with some work get to look acceptable. Of course fur seems to be getting deprecated in Maya and the thing to use now apparently is XGen. So we might look into XGen next.